hey there everyone, how new how this is Chokito and today I'm gonna take you yet on another cycling tour because I love them, but this time all around all Hong Kong. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So here's the plan, we're going to start in Japu Bridge and then head north all the way to Lushuen Park. From there we will go southwest up to the Jewish Refugee Museum. After it we will just come back to the bridge. Okay, but before we start I want to thank our sponsor today. Wait, what? No sponsor. Again. Come on Bronton, sponsor me. Oh, we haven't even started yet and I'm already so sweaty. The reason why I decided to do this route is because the northern part of the city is a bit forgotten. Perhaps because most of it is still under reconstruction, the streets are messier and dirtier, there's more chaos and it's overall older. But nonetheless, it has so much to offer. There's a lot of hidden gems that I'm going to show you today and it is one of the few neighborhoods that was able to keep alive the old Shanghai vibe that was once very characteristic of this city. One of those hidden gems is the Victory Cinema, formerly known as the Hollywood Theater, one of the first movie theaters in Shanghai, built in 1929. Yeah, almost 100 years ago, actually. In fact, the first movie theater in Shanghai was built in Hong Kong District, so this area is known as the birthplace of Shanghai cinema. Nowadays, in just a couple hundred meters, there's four more movie theaters next to this one. And not just movie theaters, but also cabaret theaters, like the Pearl, which once used to be a temple. Now we're gonna start seeing a lot of contrast here because there's a lot of modernity and old buildings and architecture all together. Now we are on Sichuan Road, which doesn't really have much to be seen apart from this park and tons of shops left and right. But what makes it special is the lively atmosphere from the crowd buildings surrounding you from all directions and just the overall vibe of the whole area. It does indeed feel like a different city out here. We're getting closer to the first highlight of the route, the Duolun Road, which is a historical street that was built as an extra settlement road. Basically, a pathway connecting local neighborhoods with international concession, in which both Chinese and foreign authorities had a certain degree of power over the administration of the road. Although the road was built primarily as a residential street, during the 20s and 30s it attracted many prominent writers, as well as some political and military leaders. Among the writers, Lu Xuan is probably the most recognizable one. Because of this, the street gained its reputation as a center of literature and thought. Definitely not a place for a Tim Budong guy like me. The street also represents the architecture of the 20th century of Shanghai, which had a lot of mixture and influences, just like this church, the only survival of its type, combining both Western and Chinese styles. As for the rest of the architecture, you will see a lot of French neoclassical influences, Islamic style influences, and of course, Shukumen, a traditional Shanghainese architectural style that combines both Chinese and Western elements. Oh, let's check out how is the neighborhood because actually people here live on this street so let's take a look at how do they live it's so so vivid you know it has so much personality this place these streets Now we have to make a quick stop here because I promised this lady when I was researching the streets, I promised her I would come to drink some tea. This is what Wow, look at the bottle, so pretty. Wow, that's so good. Then the lady was showing me some amusing photos and asked me to shoot inside for a little bit, but she was taking me somewhere else. 
and unfortunately I had no time for that since I have to show you guys around Hong Kong and there is still lots to see so next time lady next time Now, I want you to pay close attention to the walls on this street and let me know if you notice something very uncharacteristic for Shanghai walls. Yep, they have graffitis. So on this street, this is the only street I saw in the whole city where there's graffitis. And the first time I was here, I was like, why is there graffitis on this street? And then I read the name of the street and it's Tian Ai, which means sweet love street. And people are allowed to leave graffitis. Let's try to leave a graffiti as well, actually. Let me leave one here. I forgot my pen. I guess that's why I'm unlucky with love. Enough. Now, this street we're turning into has a funny name if you understand Spanish. And uh, Sida in Spanish means AIDS. So. Hopefully, I'm not gonna catch anything on the street. Okay, so we are in Bawan Street. And I don't know if it's the same characters, but Bawan means guard, like security guard. Yep, it was the same characters. And this street doesn't feel like protected by guards, but quite the opposite. A lot of chaos going on, tons of shops selling fish, turtles, and I don't know, I think some other shady things. And interesting enough, there is this isolated street in Hong Kong that looks exactly like the French concession. Not just the trees, but also the mansions. I wonder why is that? Maybe any of you know? Oh, and here I think they sell dress hoppers. That's why it's so noisy. Actually, I'm afraid of insects, so for sure I'm not buying any of that. And this over here is the children's park. May you sell your cage into my. May you sell your cage into my. Oh, I thought he would get my joke, but he didn't. Anyway. After turning here, look for the sign that says Jolong Pedestrian Tunnel. Then just follow along the road that seems to lead to nothing. But it does lead to the tunnel. It is very important to do it here because otherwise it's very complicated to get to our desired street in any other way. In this little street over here, we are heading towards a pretty interesting coffee shop that surprisingly is still working despite all the hardships that we have had with COVID. Central Perk, based on the coffee shop in the very popular TV show Friends. The shop resembles the original one a lot, and the best part of it, they always have friends on their TV. Anyway, after some cuddling time with Haxi, it was time to move on. By the way, let me know who's your favorite friend's character. My favorite one says this phrase. How you doing? That unique building across the bridge is the 1933 Old Slaughterhouse, a very unique building in Art Deco style that has turned into an office building full of coffee shops and much more. If you want to find out about it, just check my video about the building on the description below. As for today, just enjoy the way it looks from the outside. This is the longest part of our route without a specific sightseeing spot. It's mostly full of contrast between old buildings and houses and modern constructions. Mostly shopping malls and office buildings, to be honest. 
That contrast won't last too long. As you can see, most of the old buildings, especially those without much history, are being torn to be replaced by more modern and practical buildings. And this magnificent temple is something I found by coincidence and never saw before. It's Shahai Temple, and it's the place where all the fishermen and sailors in the area used to go to pray for safety and luck. Today, it's a restored Buddhist monastery that anyone can visit any day of the week. My favorite, lovely traffic light. Never ending. We're now arriving at our final sightseeing destination, the Jewish Refugee Museum. During the 1930s, around 20,000 Jewish immigrants from Germany and Austria found shelter in Shanghai. Fleeing their home countries by force, these people discovered that Shanghai was one of the few cities worldwide that didn't demand a visa for entry. This unique policy allowed them to seek refuge here. They built their lives in the city for a span of approximately 15 years. <laughs> so basically, uh, this was a coffee shop and it was bought by a Jewish refugee. After that, it became a popular place for gathering among Jewish people uh, for, I guess, different kind of activities. Maybe making business and money, because they're pretty good at that. For the last section of our route, there is a lot of modernity around, since this part of Hong Kong is almost fully developed. You will see a lot of weird futuristic stuff, like these dinosaur hearts. Looks pretty cool though. I call this mall the Zootopia Mall because it reminds me of the one of the city in Zootopia, you know? I don't know if you guys remember that movie. We've almost arrived to our destination. Just want to show you a very nice view. One of the nicest views you can have in the city without anyone around, basically, you see. All right, that's it for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know in the comments below what do you think. If you'd like to see more videos like this, also let me know. And I also wanted to let you know, guys, that I'm gonna be doing some private tour guides for you guys. So if anyone wants me to show you around Shanghai, please contact me on the email below. And don't forget, working and earning money is good and is very important, but never forget to explore, okay? I'll see you in the next one. Zai Wei.